Hey, welcome back. I'm Chris, and today we're gonna fix another heater. Let's do this real quick. Now, this is kind of part two to the other part of the heater fix here. This is really just gonna show what I did exactly to fix that part or replace the part. So if you haven't seen part one, I definitely suggest go back and watch that first just to make sure this is even the problem that you're having with your heater. It most likely is, but go ahead and watch that first and then come back. I'll, I'll, I'll wait, I'll be here. I'm not going anywhere. Check the link in the description for part one. It's there. Go, now. No, okay, 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 let's get back into it. So really all I did was, this is a pain in the butt to get out. That front control panel is a pain in the butt to get out. Watch the first video on how to get that out of there because I'm not doing it again. And you really just, you know, take that thermal cutoff or thermostat, whatever you want to call it. I would call it more a thermal cutoff because to me the thermostat is in the back. That's what's going to, you know, sense the actual temperature and then shut the unit off at your desired temperature. But this one here, this is the safety switch and that's what we need to replace. But I've been having the problem of I can't find an exact replacement for that switch. And the only thing I could come across was a microwave thermal cutoff, and that's what I've used. I used it actually from an old microwave that was at, at similar operating temperatures. So double check the operating temperatures of the switch that you might have to purchase, and as long as it's well pretty close, you should be okay. Like I said, it's just a safety, safety mechanism. Just in case a fire starts in here, it'll sense that amount of heat and shut the whole unit down. And then the unit could just burn on fire with it shut down. I, I, you know what I mean. Anyways, so to get that thing out, you take two screws out, and really just to get those wire connectors out, you might have to open them up a little bit because they are clamped on there pretty tight. It's not a big deal. But really the only difference between the two switches is, well, the mounting for the original switch is pretty much fixed. It doesn't move. And all the mounting for the microwave switches that have come across, it moves. And, well, that's great and all, but if you put it in the hole where it is, the mount's going to move, or the switch is rather going to move, and it's going to short out on the mount, and you're going to be blowing breakers or popping breakers and blowing fuses in your house or home or office, wherever you have this plugged in. So we have to modify this a little bit just by drilling a hole and mounting it slightly different so that this mount doesn't move. And that's pretty much it. There's nothing else to this. Go ahead and put everything back together, and well, you should be in business. Now forgive me, I hope this video made sense. I'm a little under the weather and I can't quite think straight. I mean, I, yeah, I know, making a video like this when I'm not thinking straight, but this is a pretty easy fix. Do it yourself with a little bit of a modification, which is really just drilling another hole so you can mount the new part, well, the way it should be mounted. Other than that, I think we're pretty much done for today and I'll see you on the next one.